So, Ann, okay. uh, let's get an update on the latest. We have so much news to cover and a lot of issues to get straight. I made an interesting uh, kind of uh, blurb, and I want to get your opinion on it. Uh, last night when I spoke on the Rents Network, because I'm on every Thursday evening as a guest. And uh, one of the first things I said is, uh, we have to understand that Mr. Putin is a player. Uh, Russia is a player. Uh, the Russian banking system is completely run by uh, Sabbatian, Satanistic, uh, uh, so-called Jewish oligarchs that, in fact, uh, Russia has been collaborating with advanced weapons and the super soldier program right since the Second World War. They divided up scientists from Germany uh, that uh, anybody who doesn't understand that Russia is playing the game and the West is going to let Russia take over all these former CIS nations because they're playing ball. And they, a few years ago, they smacked down the Chinese because they weren't playing ball. The Chinese were actually getting a little imperial, and they were hit with an earthquake weapon that killed 180,000 people, including many thousands of children, in western China because they had a giant depot underground getting ready for so-called imperial-like activity. And what I mentioned to them is that America has weapon systems that are centuries, and Red Jeff tried to correct me, that it was all decades. He said, no, no, centuries ahead of any other country. And they mentioned that, because there are some people who go on the Reds Network and say that the Russians could fire off a small nuke and set off the Tucumbra Viejo volcano. America has weapons that literally can fry an entire country without shooting one bullet or one missile, blow up the entire country, and kill every single person in it within seconds. So the idea, and if you're listening in other countries, you need to understand you're dealing with the beast empire, and that is America and Britain, with weapon systems that are so far ahead of any other country on the planet, they won't necessarily use them, though. They want to have a lot of dead Americans. They want to have a lot of dead people in the West because ultimately the globalists want, don't want us for the future. What they want is a drone class where they can only reproduce by submitting their gametes, and if they're licensed, they can reproduce. And they'll have polar body exclusion to make sure specific cool, troublesome genes aren't present, such as the God gene, or genes that indicate they might actually oppose the power and authority of the now genetically modified and cybernetically enhanced elite, like the movie Gattaca. If you think I'm just exaggerating here, we've been working on these projects for so long with uh, not only collaboration by, by channeling from transdimensionals, i.e. otherwise known as demons, but also off-world civilizations that are very numerous that we have been interacting with. As much as people don't want to believe these things, that's just too bad. The fact is that evil has constantly stalked our planet. You can go to every religious book on Earth from every different religion in any time period, you'll find evidence of this. Uh, the fact is that our government is really not our government. I mean, Obama is not really our president. He's just an actor that's acting in the position of a globalist control system that is purely satanic. And if you don't understand that Mr. Putin is just playing a role like a black hat, uh, the pesky Muslims are so spastic, the globalists don't trust them as being a good boogeyman, and they want to resurrect the, uh, if you want to call it the uh, Cold War II, with Putin. So Putin is being made out as beast dictator, but remember, there is a marriage supper occurring. That marriage is being presided over by the Pope Francis, the last pope, the black pope, the, uh, <laughs> the, uh, you know, the Satanistic pope, if you want to call it, <laughs> the anti-pope. Uh, and the marriage is between Princess Obama and Prince Vladimir, <laughs> believe it or not. So we have the author of the uh, surveillance system of the world, i.e. the Mark of the Beast, which is America, and uh, the advanced weapon systems and their vassal, Russia, who's going along to become the beast dictator to frighten the Europeans and everyone else to kind of kowtow, including the Muslims, because the Muslims are basically being armed and controlled by, by Russia, uh, by and large. They've even announced Mr. Putin is the keeper of Islam. He's also the keeper of apparently Russian orthodoxy. So... Um, just to kind of set things straight, you may hear other kind of pundits make all kinds of statements off the wall, but they're not really based on facts. The fact is that having worked with people that are from Belarus, Russia, and elsewhere in these uh, various facilities, such as Storage Tech, uh, 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 the various projects that are going on there affiliated with the U.S. government, we've had collaboration with the Russians forever, and we can deal with them, which is why we never had a breakout in a nuclear war. There were lots of proxy wars, but nothing that was ever serious although there were some pretty close calls uh, that almost resulted in launch on command. Most of them were basically stupidity and poor technology. Uh, but we propped up Russia right from the beginning, giving them nuclear materials and advanced technology so that they could be a good boogeyman. And that's what they're doing again. They're re resurrecting the Russian boogeyman game is what they're doing. Uh, what do you think of that, Ed? Well, I think that uh, there's some... Uh 
there's some possibilities in what you say, probabilities. Uh, we're certainly seeing an increase in the number of viruses that are being generated, and it looks like they're coming out of laboratories. I don't know that they're Russian laboratories. Well, the Russians, are, uh, who the else Russians would, were uh, very advanced as well. I mean, they had one city north of Moscow that had well, one bioreactor was three stories higher. <laughs> uh, the entire city of 250,000 scientists and technicians, all they did was generate biological weapons for five decades. So the Russians are very serious scientists. They have the best physicists on Earth right now. They don't have an infinite budget like Americans, but they have collaborated on everything, including the super soldier program. So uh, right since the Nazis conceived it back in the 30s, and they were attempting to do a human um, uh, cloning and so on as early as 1930s in Germany. They succeeded in cloning human beings uh, to some extent by 1957, and they were very successful by the 1970s. Their idea was to start inserting genes into uh, the embryos to do embryonic uh, gene upgrade. They've now developed what's called HACKER, Human Artificial Chromosome 47. You can actually Google that and find out it's true. The hack chromosome does exist. Uh, General Poindexter had to kind of admit a committee, a Senate committee, some years ago in the late 90s, that they had to get rid of a number of, quote, soldiers that they had developed that kind of went rogue, that they had some problems with them technically or otherwise. So what people should realize is that the world that they're told is basically for public consumption. It's not real. And so when I'm saying these things, it's not really speculation or even... Uh, you know, making a statement that maybe this is a probability, it's an absolute fact that Russia is a player and Putin is a player. And one, he's of gonna play out his, his, one of the things his, they're doing here in the, uh, in the uh, beef market is that they're, in, um, they're calling out the, the beef that have what they call the uh, uh, warrior gene. In other words, it's the aggressive gene. And they're you're just taking it out of, you're, of you're the people so that the beef will be easier to handle. Oh, really? So what they're doing is they're going to call out uh, the beef, the lines of beef that have the uh, warrior aggressive gene complexes. I think they want to do that similarly in humans to make sure they don't have anybody that will oppose them, right? Exactly. So they exactly want to stomp right. out. They want to stomp out the warrior line of human beings, such as Ann Morrison. John Moore, Dr. Bill Deagle, we're on the hit list, which is the bad list. Welcome back, and joining us with Ann, we have uh, Tim Alexander. Tim, we're off on the break. We're mentioning about some of the scenarios that are happening. Uh, I mentioned that we have just like this is like a replay of World War One and Two. Uh, the Treaty of Versailles, which basically was a treaty after the so-called armistice, because it wasn't really a surrender of Germany in World War One. The uh, armistice basically resulted in the Treaty of Versailles, which forced down German throats the idea that they were going to have to give away all kinds of land. Uh, World War II, basically, Germany just took back that land. We're seeing the same thing with the fall of the Soviet Union and the CIS nations. Many of them have joined NATO or become NATO observers. Um, what's going to happen, basically, is I believe that Putin is a player. All the banks in Russia that are oligarchs are basically Sabbatean Jews. Even Medvedev is a Jew. Don't, people don't realize that. His closest ally and friend, Mr. Medvedev, uh, Mr. Photogenic, is a Jew. Okay, and these guys are smart. The uh, Russians basically have been players making uh, the super soldier program, all kinds of advanced weapons, the space projects, etc. Russia's raiding right there like a dirty sock. So the idea that Aeroflot flights are flying back and forth to the United States and Moscow, doing all kinds of projects, even during the so-called Cold War, what people should understand is this is a dance where Russia will come out on top. They will take back most of their territory and uh, former CIS nations. They will embarrass NATO. But NATO, but, but remember, this is all part of a game. It's a white hat, a dark hat game. Well, you're, and, you're, uh, you're, you're right, Bill, because I'll tell you, the historian in me, every time I, I, I want to personally think that uh, Putin is, is a good guy, and is the guy with a white hat that's rode into town on the white horse, and he's going to no, no, no. be a player. Dodge. He's a player. Uh, he's... The, the historian in the back of my my brain is screaming at the top of uh, its lungs. Uh, you're a dummy. You're a dummy. You're a dummy because the global banking cartel, headed by the Rothschilds, have been behind all basically every major war for well over 200 years now. And they've, they've been behind both sides. They've set it up. Right. And why is now any different? 
It, it, exactly. And the thing right now is, is they want what we call reliability and predictiveness. The Russians have been very predictable during the so-called Cold War. There was never a real threat of a thermonuclear exchange, only when it, because of stupid, yeah, almost well, accidents. Only the Cuban Missile Crisis. And yeah, but even that, even that though, it was negotiated away pretty quickly when we realized. Yeah. And remember, us putting nuclear putting nuclear uh, missiles and uh, radar surveillance in Turkey was a direct affront to the Russians. So anybody who was too close could have figured out what the consequences were. And when it was pointed out, they were able to dismantle it and, and basically ship it away. This is all part of what I call a public dance. But the, the wild card is Islam. Islam is nuts. Islam is dangerous. And the other group that's dangerous are the Sabbatean Satanistic Jews that run the state of Israel. They're trigger happy. And since the second term of Bush, they've had an entire division sitting on Demona missile silo sites to prevent them from starting a thermonuclear war because the Israelis are not. So we need to annex them, take over their country completely and their military, and make sure that we disarm all the surrounding Muslim well, nations as well we as the Jews. Well, I think we do that, they'll, they'll set off the, uh, uh, the bombs that are in several of their embassies around the world uh, in the capital cities of the no, West. No, they can't send them off, if you see. There's another thing. We have surveillance satellites that can actually see a kilo up to 400 meters below ground plus. Uh, and we could find out every single one of these so-called sites where they have a nuke pre-placed and remove it. The fact is, if anything happens, it's because they permit it to happen. And, uh, you know, things are not random. Uh, people often think it's random. Just like the uh, Arab Spring, which we, they created a derivatives market to starve the people out. And then they actually created a social networking organization they met in New York City and actually planned out how they're going to use social networking to, to rev up the Arab states like Libya and Egypt to have revolts. It's all been stage managed and engineered. And they have supercomputers analyzing group behavior patterns at Stanford and other universities and modeled at the supercomputers that NSA has. So they know exactly what kind of group behavior they're going to get, just like a bunch of army ants. Yeah, you're, I, I, once again, I have to agree with you because you know what FDR <laughs> said? He said, you. If uh, something in politics has happened, you can uh, damn well bet that uh, somebody planned it out. You got it. The problem here is there's several different barriers. The first barrier to the regular public understanding is number one, the bias of normalcy, that things are always normal, and things have never been normal. Number number two is the idea of that they have this cognitive dissonance that things couldn't be that bad because nobody's that evil or would be that methodical to plan out in that extreme detail how to manipulate the public to create history. Wrong O. And, and, the, and the third area that, uh, that's really particularly disturbing is that people don't understand the level of, of uh, complete lack of conscience, decency, or whatever. The, in other words, the presence Morality. of evil. People, people dismiss the presence of evil. Here in Southern California, we had nine fires go off a couple days ago on Tuesday, and they have now found at least one 19-year-old arsonist. Uh, we know that these fires have spontaneously were not spontaneously happening. They were lit by a maniac. Yes, the conditions were there, but they're all at roadsides all over the county here, and luckily not in Vista. But we had fires all around us, and a lot of people lost their homes, and there are probably some people that died. So uh, you know, people don't conceive that on a globalist level we have that kind of level of evil. They don't understand it. Well, and they don't understand the the highest level of what I call the space chessboard where strategy is on several levels, and at the highest level is the spiritual level. And it's ultimately, it's a battle between Lucifer and God, right. uh, between the fallen angels, uh, who are absolute uh, trash, well, look, and, look and, at Mr. and all that is holy and good. Well, look at Mr. Gorbachev. Mr. Gorbachev was a genius. He uh, stage-engineered with Ronald Reagan and the powers that be that they are going to take down the Berlin Wall. This is part of the, the scamtastic game. Uh, this whole process started at a dinner that I interviewed and talked to a four-star general underground on July 10th, 1994. It started some years before when, when Mikhail Gorbachev was on one side, this general was in between, and uh, uh, Ronald Reagan. And Reagan was spouting off that they had Star Wars and the, all the various different space-based weapon platforms and equipment they already had in space by 1982. So uh, the Russians, of course, freaked out and realized it was time to play ball. Uh, Russia had been collaborating with all kinds of projects for years and also trying to pretend they could cheat, which is impossible. <laughs> you know, the fact is that both of them have psychotronic warfare and remote viewing and all kinds of horrible things, advanced weapons and encrypting technology and so on. And what's really going on is that the entire public are being kept in the dark because they're fed this, this hoo-ha 
The same way as the Muslims, you know, they, there's more Muslim Masons in the world than any other single Masonic organization. And these Masonic organizations at the top, doesn't matter if you're Catholic, Muslim, Protestant, transhuman, it doesn't really matter. If you reach that level, they consider their religion a super religion. And uh, what people don't grasp here is that the external religion, whether you're a Mormon or a Muslim, whatever, at the highest level of Masonry, is Satan, period. Satanism and transdimensional uh, uh, extra, uh, you know, world civilizations that are malevolently evil. And people don't want to believe this. They say, no, no, it can't be that way. They haven't been messing with human genetics or technology or messing around with the Those that don't order. want to believe it don't know their Bible very well. Yeah, and it's not only in the Bible. It's in the Bhagavad Gita, the Upanishads. It's in every ancient book in every continent on the planet. You know, and if you go looking for it, you find you say, "Well, oh, this is anomalous." It's not anomalous; it's everywhere. It's like, uh, excuse me, it's like salt. When you dry salt on the on the beach, it's salt. It doesn't matter what ocean it is; it's still salt. <laughs> so, so um, now, of course, we have all these plagues, as if as if they're spontaneously all happening. We've got beta coronavirus now in LA. They got signs: "Be very careful about you know the outbreak of beta coronavirus." We've got Ebola showing up. We had this boat a few weeks ago, and. We can't find any news whatsoever on what can happened tie, to these. Can I tie in what you were just talking about and what you're talking about right now? Yeah, two, go ahead. Two quick comments, okay. When Remember when the Soviet Union fell, about the same time all the Eastern European communist countries, the communist regimes fell. If I remember... They didn't the fall. Time, My Russian friend from Belarusia said, V in Belarusia, Russia, uh, the Baltic states, etc., we still communists, we just change hats. Well, the KGB and the local <laughs> version of the KGB and all these countries, like in West, uh, East Germany and Bulgaria and Romania, etc., the KGB was orchestrating the fall of communism. Right, okay, they, what, let's respell it. Instead of KGB, we'll call it C-A-G-E-Y, KG. Well, and, and, and They're very secondly, KG. <laughs> what's happening now with all these diseases, it's not a coincidence that they are happening after the invention of uh, advanced bio warfare, that is genetic engineering. Right. Welcome back, and, and uh, give us the update on all the infectious diseases that are coming. Ebola, H7N9 from China, sars beta coronavirus, all these bugs all emerging at the same time, and once they transform to become highly infective and transferable between humans, we're going to have quite a time here. If it gets up to 5% case fatality rate, it will spasm and shut society down for six to ten weeks as each wave passes. Yeah, in Saudi Arabia, uh, the Middle East respiratory syndrome coronavirus is considered endemic. Um, but I think it's epidemic. And uh, they, they're seeing increasing numbers of cases. And in their, uh, you can see the plots on the, on the uh, websites that are out there that the epidemiologists are are uh, giving out some of the data, not from um, the WHO, the World Health Organization, but from uh, independent uh, doctors. But in any case, this is the second wave. The first wave has already passed. You'd consider that an alpha test, tested on their own people, and uh, two centers arose. Now, the, what they call uh, when they're doing their testing on these on these viruses, is they call the differences clades, C L A D E S, right. and uh, in instead of varieties. So you just remember that. Uh, well, we're talking about a different variety. It's almost the same, but there's a little difference. Yeah, the and, clade has specific uh, gene and complexes, and they, so it'll have certain infectivity, incubation period, and viral load. Yes, and so initially it started out in Riyadh. <laughs> Saudi Arabia, and uh, that was spread to uh, nearby uh, neighboring countries, and hence the name Middle East Respiratory Syndrome. And uh, then a new strain uh, appeared, a new clade appeared in Jeddah. That means that there was enough difference that they, when they looked at it, they could tell the difference between that and the Riyadh strain. So now we're in beta 2 testing and uh, they're they are exporting it into other countries now then that's when you go into the beta phase phase and uh, we had uh, two cases in egypt one case in greece one in indonesia one in malaysia and uh, we've now had two in the, the netherlands 
and uh, w- these are usually returning pilgrims. And uh, we've had one in uh, near Chicago, and uh, the last one that came into the United States went into Orlando, and they are now testing people in awesome. Texas. Yeah, no, in Texas, uh, because they flew on the same flight, and when they were contacted, they had either uh, a temperature or respiratory symptoms, and so now they're testing them for the MERS. Yeah, but they're doing this after the fact. They never did proactive testing following everybody that was in contact. Pretty crazy. Oh, that, oh Saudi Arabia deliberately sent these pilgrims out. Right. To uh, to infect the other countries because they were they were hospitalized in Saudi Arabia, and then they were sent they were left allowed to go out and return home. Right, so that, they should have notified each of the public health departments of the receiving countries, and they should have been quarantined so they wouldn't spread it. And actually, the way they should have transported them, they should have had an IOSH mask on them and made sure that the air systems would not not infect other people in the same flight. This is craziness. Well, the, the the thing that I I note about this is the as the as we keep adding going to the next clade, the infection rate uh, increases. So you've had uh, uh, one person uh, in one of these cases uh, it infected quite a number of people, and when you start dealing in what will become a pandemic, uh, it's it's how much viral load is necessary to infect a human being. Is it UV tolerant? And uh, what's the, the transmission time? How does it hide? In other words, can uh, apparently uh, a healthy person be shedding the virus? How much and not have a disease state. Require? Yeah. And that, that's, all, that's all part of advanced bio war. When you create a virus, you don't just create one virus. You have all kind of tweaks on it. And you, as time goes on, you can continue to experiment with that virus and add this and add that or subtract Exactly. That. For example, the, you're right, right on there, Tim. What that means is um, right now, for example, we have the incubation period for coronavirus is up to a couple of weeks. Um, we're seeing that uh, the Ebola has an incubation three to four weeks, which means everyone that comes in from those places of North Africa should be quarantine for a month and for any of these other viruses at least two weeks um, what's happening basically is they're very sloppy well if you're sloppy when you've got advanced bio war moving in your population base you're going to end up dead well we did a simulation on the uh, we actually bought air uh, computer time on the uh, NOAA computer supercomputers up in Boulder and we ran a federal su- simulation Operation Top Off Dark Winter, and one of them was to actually simulate a uh, smallpox variant super weapon that would come into Oklahoma City, and in 90 days it would affect 93 million uh, people in the United States and infect 90 countries. That's our simulation, based on its infectivity and transport, etc. cetera. Uh, these various viruses we have coming out could be worse than that. Uh, I really think that this year, or early next, sometime in the next year and a half, we're going to have one or more of these waves that's going to shut down society for six to ten weeks. During that time, they'll do a bank holiday. They'll do things like try to get rid of the net neutrality, try to shut down alternative opinions from the from the alternative media. Uh, we're going to have a rough time, and that's why I say it's it, it's questionable whether there'll be a true federal election next time, uh, because I think that powers that be there behind Obama have figured their agenda is moving along quickly enough, but they're not getting what they want. And they want to continue with the same horse in the race rather than wish you're switching to a Republican horse that may take years for them to, to pick up speed in order to do the things they want done to the population because the population is starting to groan under the uh, terror and the tyranny of what's happening, and they're waking up. And uh, that freaks out the globalists because they don't want a awake population pushing back or a full-force worldwide revolution. That's where we're, we're going. Yeah, well, you kill a bunch of people, you scare the hell out of everybody, and then uh, you put the uh, the chip, the mark of the beast, in them so they can buy food or anything else, and uh, that's that's uh, a major step in the absolute high tech police state, and it's far more than police state. It's really a slave state. It's making uh, those that survive the waves of death that you infect on the population uh, uh, absolute slaves. And anybody that gets out of line goes to the gulag or or, uh, uh, the ovens. 
Uh, not if they can shoot back and if they've got all kinds of advanced weapons. Well, that's true, you know. And uh, you, you, the individuals should uh, be prepared to defend themselves. They should have food, water, shelter, and, uh, you know, as much food as you can for as many months as you can get because uh, we're dealing with monsters. We're dealing with people that are so psychopathic they give the word psychopathic a bad name. And, the biggest uh, problem I find is that we're going to have a lot of whiners that are going to say, well, Dr. Deagle, you prepared. Can I come into your house when <laughs> when, uh, when it happens? I'm thinking, I'll have a limited number of people that can come to my house. You need to get prepared now yourself. And, and you know, well, my finances are limited. I said, just do simple stuff. Get bulk grains. Uh, get a shotgun. You know, get five gallons stackable jugs for water. You don't have to have everything to survive. You have to have something. That's right. Right. So... Uh, and we have that. What about space weather, uh, earthquakes, volcanoes, other things dealing with the science aspect of what's going on? Because volcanism is increasing worldwide. We had a big earthquake a few weeks ago in Japan, the biggest since March 11th. What's happening in those realms? Well, we're getting ready to go through a meteor shower. It's a brand new meteor shower, one that we haven't seen before because it was caused by the comet Linear, who went through the solar system two years ago, and it crossed the orbit of Earth. Earth was not at that place in its orbit at that time. It was uh, it was over on the other side of its orbit, so it didn't uh, didn't affect the Earth. But now the Earth has is approaching that place in its orbit where um, Linear, comet Linear. Uh, left debris. You know, all comets leave debris as they're traveling through the solar system and galaxies and universe. So uh, uh, they're expecting that there will be a strong meteor shower, and uh, that would be 200 um, shooting stars per hour, but it may be a meteor storm. There may be a thousand, and there may be fireballs, and there may be meteorites. By the way, uh, uh, a couple days now, four days from now, they're going to do massive releases of uh, tritiated uh, radioactive water from the Japan Fukushima site, and they're going to continue doing massive releases every day thereafter. The big news well, story this week was that they stopped the leak, but they won't tell you what the leak was. But they know that Fukushima is a leaky mess, that they are doing nothing to stop the real problems. So, well, there is uh, a call to boycott Japanese food. Yep. Okay, stay there, uh, Tim and uh, Ann. We'll be joined by John in a moment. Hour three coming up. Uh, good to have the extended time because we have lots of topics to cover.